So this is Titlis at 3,000 metres. It's the highest turn point on the race and the halfway mark. Now let's see what's happened so far. The world's toughest adventure race is back, starting once again in the city of Salzburg, Austria. 32 athletes from around the world have come to take part in this biannual race across the Alps to Monaco. Oh, the atmosphere is completely electric, so I guess everybody is nervous and we just can't wait for it to start. At 11.30 a.m. the start gun fires and athletes race through the historic city to turn point one, the Geisberg. Being fast on the climb won't affect overall race rankings, but with hundreds of fans on the summit, honour is at stake and many athletes are keen to make a statement. They cross the Salzach River and then the hard work begins, climbing 864 metres to the summit. The race is on. Toma Kokonea, Paul Guschelbauer, Kriegel Maurer. This year, two women are also taking part. But leading the way is the hotly tipped French rookie Maxime Pinot. He is followed by Austria's Paul Guschelbauer and Simon Oberauner. And it's 27-year-old Pinot who claims the Geisberg Trophy in a time of one hour, five minutes and 50 seconds. At the summit, there's time for a quick drink, a change of clothes, and then athletes race to take to the skies. The next destination on this epic adventure race to Monaco is the turn point of Wagrain Kleinau, 54 kilometers to the south. Having launched from the top of the Geisberg, the pack is up and in the air on the way to turn point two, Wagrain Kleinau. The hope for a long flight vanishes as the bad weather and rain comes in, forcing athletes to land but most are happy they managed to get in a flight at all. Paul Guschelbauer has a close call in the adverse conditions and comes down in a river. It's a lucky escape, and fortunately he suffers no harm. Unfortunately, the same can't be said for his glider. Athletes switch to running and hiking mode and begin the long march to turn point two, Wagrain Kleinau. the running legend Toma Kokonea who is first to make it around 9.30 p.m. Of course, who else could it be? He is followed by Kriegel Mara, who arrives just before the mandatory rest period begins at 10.30 p.m. and Benoit Utez, who had pulled a night pass. The most important is to be uh, in a good takeoff for tomorrow morning. So, if I want to do this, uh, I have to push a lot, but with the night pass, I can work uh, <laughs> Flying conditions are looking promising for day two, and athletes are keen to get back in the air. A good tactical decision from Utez, he can take off early and put some distance in the air. And he still has one night pass left to play after his joint win at the prologue. Guschelbauer, one of the top athletes in the race, is also up in the air, keen to make up lost ground after the previous day's unplanned excitement. Who will be the first to reach turn point three, Ashau Kimsey? Kriegel Mara is leading the field. A huge crowd awaits at Ashau Kimsey, the German turn point in the heart of Bavaria is situated on the northern edge of the Alps. It's Mara who is first to come into land, impressing the crowd with his acro flying skills. Chasing hard behind him is Maxime Pinot from France, and then it's Paul Guschelbauer who adds his signature to the signboard. Behind the leader and chasing hard are a chaser pack of 11 athletes, all within 20 kilometers of each other. It's a real mix of veterans, newcomers and legends alike, from Manuel Nubel to Tom de Dorlado to Antoine Girard and Toma Kokonea. 
they are all determined not to let Maurer get away. By late afternoon, the leading pack has left Ash Al Kimzi and is trying to get as close as possible to turn point four Kronplatz, 120 kilometers to the south in Italy. Up front is Kriegel Maurer. With the main chain of the mountains to cross, it will be a challenging journey ahead. Day three of the Red Bull X Alps begins with the weather looking good. Kriegel Maurer and Maxime Pino have hiked up the mountains early and are hoping so. Pino, then Mara launch from the high snowfields in a bid to cross the main ridge of the Alps and reach turn point four, Kronplatz. Pino is having an incredible race. The young French rookie has never not stood on a podium in a hike and fly race, and he has every intention of continuing that run. Not far behind is Paul Guschelbauer and Antoine Girard chasing hard. Benoit Uterz is also in the chaser pack. Maurer arrives first at Kronplatz to claim the Saliva Trophy. He adds his name to the signboard and quickly takes off to cross the main chain of the Alps for a second time towards Lermus. Maxime Pino is next to arrive, but he's not happy, having lost 20 minutes to Mara. He also has to watch his back, as not far behind is Paul Guschelbauer and Antoine Girard. It's turning into a super tight fight. The race to Lermus in the Tiroler Zugspitz Arena just got interesting, as a costly mistake forces Mara to land losing him his 40 kilometer lead over the Frenchman. He gets back into the air, but Pino seizes his chance and catches up. Together, they arrive at Lermou shortly after 5 p.m. It's been an extraordinary day of adventure. They have crossed the main chain of the Alps twice and tagged two turn points, all in a day. I think we got landed and had to, to go back up, but she was but in front at one moment, so just he walked up and we just, when he took off, I was just maybe one kilometer behind. The big surprise of the day goes to Aaron Duragatti. The Italian flying ace has made his way from the back of the field on day one to third place at Lermus, an incredible performance. The fourth and last athlete to make Lermus today is the Austrian Paul Guschelbauer. It's been an extremely fast day, but will the leaders be able to keep up the momentum as they venture onwards into Switzerland? That all depends on what the weather does next. The leading four athletes who each passed the Lermus turnpoint the day before all take advantage of the morning to hike into good takeoff positions. It looks like it could be another great flying day. Durugatti and Guschelbauer are battling for third, where interestingly Guschelbauer has placed three out of the four of his Red Bull X Alps outings. Maura and Pino are up front and have the best shot of reaching Davos first. Maura passes the halfway mark. Once again, he leaves the rest of the field trailing in his wake as he flies with incredible speed and efficiency across the Alps. Pino, meanwhile, has already hiked more than 160 kilometers in this race and flown 850. He has to use everything in his armory just to cling on to Maurer. With the field spread out several hundred kilometers from Aschau Kimze to Davos, it makes it quite the logistical challenge for race director Christoph Weber to keep up with athletes. They go on with the same speed like they do at the moment. Griegel will finish the race in seven days. The Swiss mountain resort of Davos is used to hosting world leaders. Today it gets another one from the leading athlete of the world's toughest adventure race, who drops in at lunchtime. He's quickly on his way. 
the weather is good and I have to hurry up to continue the flight direction Titlis. Next to arrive is Pino, who may yet be able to catch up with Maura. Then it's Aaron Duragati and Paul Gushubar, who arrive some hours later in the afternoon. Next stop is Titlis, 100 kilometers to the west. French athlete Gaspar Petiot is the first to arrive among the chaser pack to Laumus. The race's youngest athlete, Patrick von Kernel, who is 24, comes next, followed by the French athletes Benoit Uterz and Antoine Girard. They are still ones to watch in a race that is far from over. They're all anxious to get back in the air as fast as possible as the next athletes come into land. It's been an extraordinary day for Kriegel Mara. He approaches Titlis from the air and lands on the summit slopes, saving his legs the pain of several hours of climbing. A passing thunderstorm meanwhile forces Pino to land lower down in the valley. It's potentially a game-changing moment in the race. Mara is able to eat and rest at Titlis Station while the storm passes, before launching once again, this time with a legendary Eiger in his sights. Day five dawns and it's not long before Mara is in the air and on the way to the Eiger. The angels are clearly on his side. Pino is forced to take the hard way to Titlis, hiking 2,000 meters to the top as the bad weather comes in. It's an exhausting ascent. Yesterday, I was maybe 45 minutes behind Kriegel and, uh, and it, it made a big difference at the end. Meanwhile, the chasing pack arrives in Davos and someone gets an unexpected welcome surprise. It's French athlete Tom de Dolado's 34th birthday. Happy birthday to you! Happy oh, birthday! Okay. All the best! Woo. Really nice. Really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> You're so cool, guys. Thank you very much. But it's not a happy day for everyone. Uterz has challenges with his equipment. But for Antoine Girard, it's his body that needs fixing. I don't know. Today I break, maybe tomorrow I break also. We'll see. Up front, the race is full on, and Pino is not yet ready to give up the fight for the Red Bull X Alps title. I want to go to take off at the pass there and uh, make a glide after uh, in the direction of, uh, of Thun because I want to use my night, night pass uh, on the flat mainly. And not doing uh, up and down, it's not uh, useful. So, yeah, this way. Okay. So, I'm back in the Audi e tron on a mission to catch up with the athletes as they make their way to Monaco. Stay tuned for lots more action to come. So this is Titlis at 3,000 meters. It's the highest turn point on the race and the halfway mark. Now let's see what's happened so far. <laughs> 